Hello everybody, my name is Eric. Uh, hopefully finally feeling well enough to actually film something again. Uh, and today we're going to be taking a look at something someone DM'd me. Uh, this is something I would have actually not thought of as being as big of an issue. Now it's well known that downloading games or software from pirate sites is risky. But movies should be fine, because movies should not contain executable content. Now for obvious reasons, I'm going to blur out the name and any identifiable information about what should be in this film. Uh, partially for legal reasons, and also because this film is somewhat explicit. Now I've sent this, someone was trying to download it. So where is the scam here? Well first of all, we can try and uh, watch the movie that we've just downloaded. We can do that in Windows Media Player. And it doesn't play. Okay. So you might think, well, okay, Windows Media Player isn't all that good, so we'll try a different media player. They'll do VLC because it's easier to install on Windows. Also, the first time I'm recording a video on Wayland, which is the new Linux uh, desktop. Now, that's just on the host, but we'll see if Capture with Pipewire and everything works as intended. So now that we've got VLC going, try watching this family-friendly movie in VLC. And VLC is a lot more robust than Windows Media Player, so the fact that this doesn't work, we can pretty safely assume this is not a legitimate MKV file. So what exactly is it? Well, uh, let's take a look over at the shortcut. Because this is the actual scheme here. Now if you hover over it, you can figure it out. Now of course, shortcuts are the one thing that even if you have known file extension enabled on Windows, uh, shortcuts never show a .lnk extension. So what exactly do we have here? So percent com spec percent slash s slash c powershell no profile execute. What are we executing? Let's just move this into a notepad so we can read it more. So GC total count 502 path jump in jpeg. So I'm guessing there's some sort of shell code hidden in jumpin.jpg, but jumpin.jpg, as we can see, is a real JPEG file. So let's now turn on MITM proxy and try executing this command. Okay, that is not a good sign. If your family-friendly movie looks like a blinking command prompt, uh, you have probably not downloaded a family-friendly movie. Oh, oh, my. Okay, so... Okay, this is not very stealthy. I'm just trying to remember, how do you copy and paste on Windows CMD? Oh, I did it, good. Okay, well that was very likely the easiest uh, deobfuscation I've ever done. Try and fix the formatting a bit, but opening it with WordPad should give us an idea of what that did. Uh, we can also, I don't see anything super fishy in the MITM proxy, but let's try opening this with, well, code might also work. So this is the extract function, and it requires that we have 7-zip. So the actual fake movie file is not a movie at all, it is actually a zip file. Oh, we just had another PowerShell pop up just now. So I guess whatever payload has been installed isn't done. So get content path, enter user, enter user, that does not look randomly generated. And then this is the classical reg asm method where you then inject the real payload into reg asm.exe rather than using your own malicious exe it's quite common this is just a bunch of obfuscation to get to the net framework folder canon can that's not random that that is a chosen variable where is this okay and this is setting up a scheduled task so and then it will pretend uh, to be a movie converter and here is where it's set up now, of course, uh, and this is an unfortunate problem with uh, the digital signature verification, is yes, PowerShell is a Windows component, but this is not a Windows functionality. And in fact, all of those are legitimate Windows components that for some reason uh, auto runs is mistaking for being unverified. So here we can see what this one actually does. So we can actually find the PowerShell script in our users. Say hidden folder, 
and we get a movie converter dot XML, which I believe is the task. It is, and we get a lane dot PS one, which is, of course, that's not. That is because my username is that. It's not because it's not always going to be that. Generated by Microsoft Corporation. Uh, they make it like if you just uh, put a comment in a function. Uh, that's just, that's not a digital signature guy. So this is. I don't really understand the obsession with user dot that, but I've seen it before. And then this is how. Oh, it's a, okay, surround. So I think there's some sort of shell code hidden in our user profile. So it seems like this is our mystery file. Okay, we can't open it in 7-zip, but let's see what uh, Hexfiend could do. Amazingly, it hasn't made any network requests. We can also try VirusTotal, because VirusTotal uses signatures. And a lot, of, a lot of malware will use the simple fact that on Windows, if you execute something via the command prompt, it doesn't have to have, it, the file format doesn't matter. Whereas if you do it by the explorer.exe, it does. So VirusTotal has never seen this file before, but it's possible that there could be a signature. Okay, so it's, it is a plain text byte string. That is really weird. So it's a bunch of hexadecimal. Now looking at the entropy of the JPEG, Egg, uh, we may be able to find the suspicious region. The Bimwalk doesn't find anything. Okay, so the magic is, it's just a very small amount of space. And of course, because PowerShell is a profoundly weird language, uh, we seem to index on lines rather than characters. Hence why that produces quite a lot of text instead of a few characters. Most of the time, unless it's insanely tricky, the best way to deobfuscate a script is sort of to go through and execute the bits of it, ideally in the same language so that you can quickly figure out what it's going to do, and just get rid of the execution part. Okay, so we get base64. Okay, so then this payload continues seemingly to rely on steganography, so wow, these guys have gone all out. And they've, e they've even come up with names for these functions, which is sort of creative. And here is stage two. And that creates the scheduled task. And that was, this is pretty much, okay, let's execute. Let's actually dump out. Uh, so this can now become stage three dot PS1. So here it checks if we have anything capable of extracting Braille software. And this actually looks less obfuscated than the one we caught the command line. Seems like that info file was also suspicious. But so is the MKV. So they so they really quite cleverly the entire pirated movie. And this sets up these hides some more stuff. I mean they're definitely up on their stealth techniques. I always have to question at some point, especially given you probably if you're targeting people downloading movies who would run who would execute code by mistake, you're probably not targeting the most technically savvy people, I don't, I don't really understand. But I, I think it probably defeats a lot of antiviruses. Let's just see if we can open this info file as a text file, because that's what it would be if... Nope, nope, it is in fact a real file. Because info files, uh, as used by piracy groups, are text files. Uh, an info file is also a Windows system info file, but that's unrelated. Oh, and those anti-user files are actually in. Now, at least on my system, the so-called... Okay, that password. It's probably got to be decoded, but... Original KV never worked. Let's see what it does with that. Oh, it did. It's already... Okay. So it looks like the original DE does, for whatever reason, actually contain the movie. So, the virus was hidden in the JPEG and the info file. And of course, you would have no way of decrypting the movie without running the shortcut. But, that, it's a strange idea. I mean, evidently, it has worked. Martin Screlly lost half a million dollars uh, to a torrent, but at least he had the excuse that he had just gotten out of jail and thought that SCR was a new type of uh, file format. But... 
This is kind of an odd one. Uh, this was actually surprisingly sophisticated and obfuscated malware for what it is. Unfortunately, given we never got any hits on MITM proxy, it looks like the C2 server is now dead. Which is the other problem with malicious torrents, is that torrents tend to have a very long shelf life, and command and control servers for stealers don't usually last more than a few weeks. So that is going to be all for this video. Please leave a like, and tell me in the comments if you enjoyed it, and uh, if you are going to go to questionable sites to download movies, please be very careful. Understand that if you see this little icon here, that is a shortcut, and a shortcut can have any extension or no extension, but you should never need a shortcut to run a movie or any sort of media file. Never. It, it's pretty much impossible what some people are worried about, which is like a malicious MKV or MP4. I wouldn't worry so much about that. Just be very, very sure that whatever you are running is what it says it is. And uh, remember that while it wouldn't be malicious in a media player, sonography does exist and therefore data can be hidden inside of a file that could then be executed by a different script. That's all for me for now. Bye!